Welcome to Seashore Art School. I'm a mermaid. I'm Fiona Fish Finger. I live under the Erskine Bridge and I like to swim in the sunlight zone, but more about that later. Let's go to Fox Pot with my friend Lucy. Anyone got any sunscreen? Today I'm looking at a book called Harry by the Sea. I really love this book. I got it out of Fox Bar Library. It's a really cool story. It's all about a little dog who gets covered in seaweed and everyone thinks he's a sea monster. And then when the seaweed falls off him, they get a surprise. <laughs> oh. I love surprises. I wish I could have a surprise. I know. I'll go and show my mum my book. Mum! Oh, oh, hello, Lucy. Oh, what's this? Look at this lovely book. What's this? Oh, it's Harry by the Sea. Oh, Harry by the Sea. Is that a lovely book, Lucy? Yeah, I love this book. Oh, look at the pictures. Aren't they nice? I love Harry. Oh, my goodness. Harry makes a good sea monster, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh there's his family. I like his family. Oh. oh, they get a surprise, don't they, when they see him being a sea monster? Oh. Would you like to make a sea monster that's surprising, Lucy? I'd like to have a surprise. Yes, would you like that? Yes, please. I'd like to draw a pizza and it'd be a surprise. I'll help get the things. <laughs> OK, then. Let's go. Sea creatures with me, Catherine Crayon. Let's begin. Now, for this activity, we need a piece of plastic. I've taped mine down onto the table here. You can use a piece of carrier bag or a poly pocket, which is what this is. I'll show you what I mean by that. One poly pocket. You also need a pair of scissors some paper, I got black and white, so you can use whatever colour you want, some children's ready mixed paint, some tape for putting down your poly pocket onto a piece of cardboard or a flat surface, some paint brushes and a little bit of old material and a twig for us to make a twig tool, which is what we're going to start with, okay? So that's everything you need for mono printing. Let's start. So we're going to make a little tool out of this twig. So what you do is you get a little piece of material, fold it into quarters or even smaller if it can fit. Wrap it around the end of your twig like this. So it's like you're making a little witch's broomstick but with fabric instead of twigs, isn't it? So let's just quickly get that wrap round, round the bottom onto the twig. And now you're making yourself a little homemade tool, which is going to be nice for doing this printing with. It's a little bit like a giant homemade cotton bird, isn't it? There we go. Brilliant. And I made another one earlier, so I've got two sizes now. It's all right, isn't it? Off we go. Now, this is going to be the messy area. This is where we're going to put our, pit, our paint to do our print from. And each print is different. That's the funny thing about mono printing. Every print is different. I'm going to quickly put my gloves on now so I don't get too dirty. Now, I don't actually have any newspaper to put down underneath my work. If you've got newspaper, brilliant. Um, I've just got a washable table. OK, so I'm going to be a bit careful. Right, here we go. First of all, we're going to put paint onto our picture here. So. If you use quite watery paint, it gives you a different effect. If you use thicker paint, then you can do other things in it. I'll show you in a second. So you paint onto your surface like this, paint your paint on. Let's get a bit of water and experiment now. So I'm going to use my new twig tool I made and a bit of water. And I'm going to remove some of this paint. Make some C effect for the background look. 
So you can see you've got a lovely effect there. Now the thing that's about this is it's a very surprising way of printing. You're not ever sure how it's going to end up. So I like things like that. I don't know about you. Now I've cut out some shapes in paper that I'm going to put onto my print to mask out some areas which means that when I go on to print these waves not all of those waves will come through some will be left clean so I'm going to have my sea monster looming out from there and have some seaweed at the bottom I don't know if this is going to work it's all an experiment but it's fun isn't it and he's going to be looking at a mermaid she's holding up a mirror showing him his reflection so let's see what we think. I don't know if this is going to work. It's all an experiment, as I say, but it's fun to try, isn't it? So there's her hand holding the mirror. There's her arm on her lap. Now I'm going to add some more details. So mermaid hair, orange. It's got to be a red head, I think, this mermaid. Oh, I've probably copied that, haven't I, from Ariel or something. And I've painted over her arm now, which means that's going to be covered with her hair, but that's all right. I don't mind. And now I want her tail. Ooh, well, let's have a lovely green tail, shall we? I'll move my seaweed so her tail's behind there. Now, the more gloopy your paint, the more it's going to blob when you print on it. And the drier it is, the less it is. Now, you can scratch out shapes using the other end of your paintbrush, if you like. And let's, let's maybe use that little tool to make her hair a bit different. Yes, that's a bit of a shape, isn't it? Well, that's all right. As many marks as you can get on this, the more interesting, I think. Maybe I could do something in the background for the sea. Let's have a bit more. Oh, I might do a pretty frame, actually, up there. Like a dream. My monster's dreamt he's met the mermaid look. Right, my seaweed goes back on top. Let's do our first mono print. This is the exciting bit. Ooh. So a piece of paper, place it gently on top of your picture. And smudge. Ooh, look at this, look how grubby my hands were. I didn't realise, did you? This is the back of the picture, isn't it? You're probably a lot less messy than I am. Now that seaweed, those dots aren't going to show through unless I push them with my thumb. So I'm going to try that and see if it works. And then the moment of truth. Let's remove our picture. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and add the details now to my picture and do another print to the same, the same plate as, it's, as, it, as it were. Let's have another try. Oh, look, he's got a pretty image on him, look. So I can just about see where my things were, my sea monster, my things. So I'm now going to add some details there. His eye is about here. I'm going to have a big mournful eye looking up. Looking up at her like that. And he has a shiny wet eye, so I'm going to try and do... So gleam in his eye. I'm going to use a bit of white for a gleam. And he's looking at his own reflection, isn't he? So let's do a bit of blue for his reflection now. Let's have a look at our print to see where the mirror is roughly. Ah oh, yes, look, it's there. He's seeing his big eye look reflected back at him. Ooh. And he's got a Sweet face, isn't he? There he is. Might give him some scales. And he's got a long, funny nose. And then my mermaid's face. Bit big, I think, for that. Now I found a little bottle of ink for my mermaid's eye. I'm going to see if I can dot 
they do not hunt for her face. And now, I'm going to put it back on and see if I can get a print of their features. So we line it up the way it was before. So we've aligned it um, basically where it was the same before by using the masking tape as a guide and we pat it down in the areas where we've just printed and then peel it off to see what we've got. Oh, around. There she is, the mermaid and the monster looking at his own reflection. And now we can quickly frame this. picture you made. Do you want to tell me about it? Well I did a creature that looks a bit like a jellyfish and there's some tentacles as you can see. Oh yes I can see. And um, and also um, I did the pizza and I used some carbon paper afterwards to do another bit of in the detail. That's lovely Lucy. Look at this one that you've done. I love this one. This is a very watery monster isn't it? Yes, it is. I did it with the watery technique that you showed me. And I love how watery he is. And when I lifted up um, the pizza, it was such a surprise. I know, it's a lovely way of not knowing what you're going to expect, isn't it, Lucy? Yes, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for Kathy's Smarty Arty Party. Monoprinting is the only technique of printing where each print is different. It's the most like painting out of all the printing methods. You can use printing ink if you have any and stencils like we did with the mermaid and the little fish and a roller to ink your piece of plastic and you can have delicate lines then see but not everyone has those materials so we may do with water-based paints. It's easier to use printing ink for finer results but it's fun to try and it's fun to experiment. There are some artists you can look for for inspiration. There's a monoprinting artist called George Basilitz. Uh, he did monoprinting and he exhibited his pictures upside down. What do you think, eh? Do you think any of my pictures are better upside down? Is your picture better upside down? And another artist I love does wild painted seascapes She's called Maggie Hamblin. So if you have a look online or in your local library, you might find their pictures. Let me know what you think. At home, you can try different paper for printing onto and different paints for different effects. If you take a photograph of your work, we'd love to see it. There's an address you can send it to at the end of this episode. So look out for that. Oh, and don't forget to think of a name for your newly discovered sea creature. I'm calling mine, uh, Michael, the mirrored walwuskid. What about you, Lucy? Have you named your creature? Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed doing a monoprint. It certainly was a surprise, wasn't it? We had no idea how it would turn out. <laughs> I'm going to call mine Spooky Slimy Sonia. One of those deep sea, sea pictures looked like my brother Johnson Barnacle. He's a tripod fish. That was a surprise seeing him again. He normally slurks about in the section we call the abyss where there is no natural light there are five layers in the ocean the top layer where i swim is called the sunlight zone then it's the twilight zone then even deeper the midnight zone which has no sunlight at all below that is the abyss and the bottom of the sea is the trenches at eleven thousand and thirty four meters down challenger deep in the deepest point in the ocean. Why not find out your own surprises by researching what animal and plant life live there? And now 
it's time for me, my surprising true or false quiz. Ready? Ready. When you sit on the sandy beach, some of the sand is animal poo. True or false? Um, it's false. It's true. The parrotfish has a beak like mouth that can crush rocks and coral. It does this to eat the algae inside. It grinds down the limestone into a short and powdery dust. It's sand and it gets rid of it by excreting it. Wow. What, you mean parrotfish poo sand castles? Yes. Ugh. It's basically just sand. Right, I have to go. Tide's coming in. We hope you enjoy your creature printing. We'd love to see what you do. If you'd like to send a photo of it, the address is coming up next. Goodbye.